Hello everyone. My name is David Edsel and I'll be the narrator for this video. We're preparing to ride 3,500 miles in 10 days from Indianapolis uh, to the Rocky Mountains and back. Let me introduce my friends. Uh, Steve is on the left and Rex is on the right. Our first stop will be Durango, Colorado, where we will spend a couple of days with our friend Mike at his home. The ride out was less than great. We had 104 degrees temperature and heavy crosswinds as we crossed Kansas. Also a large wildfire was burning near Durango, so we had to find an open road to be able to even get there. Mike welcomes us and we settle in for the evening. Dinner and drinks are, and good fellowship abound. Mike explains that the million dollar highway loop is closed due to the fires. We're quite disappointed because this was one of the highlights we planned for this trip. So we set out the next day and watched the rain. Mike toured us around Durango. We saw the smoke from the fires. The air quality was not great. Uh, you could smell the smoke. We met Mike's son and family, and at the end of the day, Mike fixes us another great dinner on his grill. Mike's home is in a beautiful area of Durango. The wildlife wanders around just outside his door. As it turns out, the rain slowed down the fires, so our million dollar highway opened up for us the following day, and what a wonderful ride it was because there was practically no tourists or traffic. The loop runs north of Durango up through Silverton and Telluride. The scenery is absolutely breathtaking. That was one million dollar highway ride. I think it's the best scenery I've ever seen on such a short ride. Anyway, we returned to Durango for our last night's sleep and then we bid Mike a fond farewell. Our goal for tonight is Moab, Utah, but we take a slight detour in order to visit the Four Corners. The Four Corners uh, are where four states come together in one spot, Arizona, Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico. I'm standing with my left toes in New Mexico, my right heel in Colorado, my right toes are in Arizona, and my right heel is in Utah. This monument uh, is maintained by the Navajo Indian Nation. 
we backtrack uh, just a bit and then head up north through Monument Valley on our way to Moab. Monument Valley is a region of the Colorado Plateau characterized by a cluster of vast sandstone buttes, the largest reaching a thousand feet above the valley floor. It is located on the Arizona-Utah border near the Four Corners area. Monument Valley was featured uh, in uh, director John Ford's 1939 film Stagecoach starring John Wayne. It had an endearing influence in making the valley famous. After the first experience, Ford returned nine times to shoot westerns, even when the films were not set in Arizona or Utah. Other films shot in uh, Monument Valley include uh, Stanley Kubik's film 2001 A Space Odyssey in 1968 and Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in the West in 1968 Easy Rider in 1969, Electric Light in Blue in 1973, Clint Eastwood's movie The Iger Sanction in 1975, Back to the Future Part 3 in 1990, to name a few. Once we arrive in Moab, uh, we have a whole day to play around, so we take an off-road Jeep tour of the Arches area. Well, later on in the next couple weeks, that moon will start rising directly over the mountains. actually do. Same with the juniper berries. They use those to marinate um, deer, elk, and rabbit. It takes the gaminess out of the meat. So they. Do you run the same path all each time, or do you have variants? There's a little bit of variance. Like the four hour is different than the two hour and the sunset is different. Yeah. So this area is kind of neat. When we get, uh, if it was to rain really, really hard, you'd get a big flash flood coming through here. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are that's oak trees and oak brush.
in out here, we're in the middle of a desert that this black crusty dirt off to our left. They call it cryptobiotic soil. It's actually alive. It's that black crusty. Basically keeps the dirt from blowing away and washing away, but it's that black crusty dirt right there. And it's called cryptobiotic soil. My phone was dialing. I was like uh, nipple dialing. <laughs> oh. I kept hearing this beep, 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 and my phone was like <laughs> dialing. Nipple dialing, that's new. <laughs> I think we can, I think we can. Crossing the Slick Rock bike trail again. Oh yeah. <laughs> what on earth is this bike trail about that? That's a pretty good drop and you're dropping right into sand. Yeah, wouldn't you just go pull up and stop? Yeah, I've seen some good wrecks right there. I bet. Yeah, that was weird. My phone was dialing in my pocket. <laughs> I was nipple dialing. <laughs> like right there, there's a tree growing right out of a rock. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Then all the way around it, you have the lichen and the cryptobiotic soil down below. So we're in the desert, but even the dirt's alive. That's a juniper tree as well. Yeah, those juniper berries are almost like an antacid, like if you, yeah. I think that's why, they, they probably makes sense why it's good for, for gout. Yeah. I've heard a few recipes. One was crab apple jelly. <laughs> I know it's good for like if you eat something really spicy and you don't have a tums nearby. Yeah. Life. yeah.
You really don't. <laughs> cap is a U-joint cap, so they blew out their U-joint. <laughs> fun and a half. So we need to wash the desert sand and dust from our throats before we head east towards Pikes Peak. We will get there um, late this afternoon. We'll find lodging and do the Pikes Peak Mountain early tomorrow morning. It seems that much of the time they won't let you go all the way to the top in your own vehicle. They want you to take their shuttle on up from about midway point. Parking is limited at the top and motorcycles are often allowed to go all the way if the traffic is light enough. That is why we decided to go early in the morning. On uh, the way we crossed the Continental Divide. That is where surface water flows toward the Pacific Ocean on the west side and the east side has water flowing east toward the Atlantic and the Mississippi rivers. This is a peak of our lodging for tonight. The next morning we start up the Pikes Peak Mountain.
Well, we made it to the top of Pike's Peak. The sign says 14,115 feet. However, my GPS puts it at 14,135 feet. The temperature is 54 degrees. There isn't much oxygen up here, so fast movements will make you feel bad. After a little look-see, we start back down the mountain. This mountain, called a 14er, is located in Pike National Forest, 12 miles west of downtown Colorado Springs. The mountain is named in honor of American explorer Zebulon Pike, who was unable to reach the summit. The summit is higher than any point in the United States east of its longitude. Pikes Peak is one of Colorado's 53 14ers, mountains more than 14,000 feet above sea level. This mountain rises 8,000 feet above downtown Colorado Springs. It is designated a National Historic Landmark. Well, once back down on reasonably level ground, we head for Hannibal, Missouri for our last night of this trip. I've been to Hannibal by automobile, by truck, by motorcycle, and coming up the Mississippi River by houseboat. The river community is best known as the 19th century boyhood home of author Samuel Clemens, a.k.a. Mark Twain. The settings of Twain, Twain's novels, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, are inspired by this town. After dinner, a stroll around the town brought us to find this relic sitting beside a sidewalk in the rain. It's called a linotype. For many years, these machines were used to set type in newspapers and printing houses. As it turns out, I am a bit of an expert on linotype machines. I used them to set type many years ago. Computers have put these machines into museums. Well, all but this one. Tomorrow, we run the few hours it takes to return home.